Welcome to Good Shepherd Baptist Church streaming services. Catch us at goodshepherdbaptist.org or on our Facebook page every Sunday at 10 a.m. Also join us on Mondays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. The days and times listed on your screen are also available on the website. In just a few moments, we will be joining Bishop Jeffrey L. Reeves Sr., Senior Pastor of Good Shepherd Baptist Church with today's message. We can be reached at goodshepherdbaptist.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. And giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. God bless you, Good Shepherd. It's another day that the Lord has made, and we come to praise Him. Song says this, listen. God is great and greatly to be praised.
seek for joy. Ah. You not leave it, leave for joy. Say, I don't know what you come to do. 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 Say, I ain't come to look at you. I ain't come to look at you. Say, I ain't come to look at you. I ain't come to look at you. Say, I come to clap my hand. I come to clap my hand. Won't you clap your hand? Won't you clap your hand? I come to clap my feet. Won't you clap your feet? Our next food distribution will be Wednesday, January 12th. Those who wish to volunteer once again may do so on our website at goodshepherdbaptist.org. Once again, thank you for helping us to be a blessing. We cannot do this without you. The Den, GSBC's Young Adult Ministry, is hosting Overcomers Bible Study. This virtual four-week series will take place every Thursday night at 7 p.m. starting Thursday, January 27th through Thursday, February 17th. All sessions will be held via Zoom. Feel free to log in or dial in. For Zoom links, please email Pastor Angel White at awhite at goodshepherdbaptist.org. That's Overcomers Bible Study.
Roll Call. It's time for The Zone and The Encounter Chat and Check-In. Children and youth, elementary to high school, are invited to this virtual chat and check-in with Pastor Angel White on Tuesday, February 1st at 6.30 p.m. For the Zoom links, please email Pastor White at awhite at goodshepherdbaptist.org. That's the Zone and the Encounter chat and check-in. We hope to see you soon. We were taught a song that says, yes, Jesus loves me, but the Bible tells us so. If we will buy ourselves, I think we will return our response to him by saying this, I love you. I love you. Forever. Forever. With all my heart. With all my heart. Say it again. Say, I love you. I love you. Forever. Forever. Whenever you are my king. Say it together corporately and worship together. Lift your voice, everybody. Say, I love you.
still rules and reigns over everything. Forever you're my king. But there's something about the name of Jesus. Say, forever you're my king. Forever you're my king. I worship you. I praise you forever, Lord. For you're my king forever. Forever you're my king. Now bow down and worship the king. Worship our king. Give him the glory due his name. He's worthy, he's worthy, mighty and excellent is our God, forever you're my king, you're worthy of our praise, you're worthy of our worship, and God we pray you receive our praise today, you get all the glory, honor be thine, we worship you Lord, hallelujah, forever you are our king, you are the king of kings, you are the Lord of lords. Jesus Christ, the first and last. No man works like you. So that's why it's so easy to worship you. It's so easy to praise you. We love you today, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are our King, our Savior, our Lord. Bless your name, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord and good morning, saints. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Well, I'm here, and I know that physically you are not, but all of us this morning are in the house of the Lord. If you're in the presence of God uh, this morning, amen. Please know you're still in the right place at the right time. For in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. How grateful we are on this Sunday morning to come back before you to share with you a word from the Lord. I'm going to go ahead on and get right to it. Uh, we have much to say and a little time to say it in. So please bow your heads with me this morning as we pray. Oh Lord, our God, we pray now that you would Allow your word to go forth with power. Give us, O oh God, the ability to understand what is being said. We pray, God, that you'll help us to receive it in the Holy Ghost. I pray, Lord, that you would temper my mind and my tongue. I pray, O oh God, that you would force them to be obedient to the doing of your will. I only want to say those things that you want us to say. Nothing more, nothing less. Consecrate me now to your service, Lord, by the power of your grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope. May my will be lost in thine. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, my brothers and sisters, thank you for tuning in, amen, to our worship service this morning. I hope and pray that you enjoyed our throwback service on last Sunday, amen. We ain't seen the saints in the building like that in a long time, and it was good to see. So we thank you for tuning in. So this really, for me and for you, is really our first Sunday together in the new year, although it's the second Sunday. Um, but we uh, pray um, that you will be open and attentive to what the Lord has to say. I want to invite your attention to the book of Revelation chapter 3. I only want to lift up verse number 22. Revelation 3 and 22. This is what the scripture says. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. One more time, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I want to entitle this sermon this morning, Listen Up. Listen Up. We had a leadership meeting 
here at Good Shepherd uh, about three weeks ago. And we were gathering together to just see where we were in terms of reopening the building and the like. And uh, during the course of that meeting, I shared with our leaders um, a portion of what I'm going to share with you today and uh, in the Sundays beyond. But I want us all to be on the same page. The Lord gave me some prophetic revelations that I wanted to share. And um, this morning, we're going to share the first one that the Lord gave me to give to the church. We've shared it with leadership. And now I'm sharing it with you. And again, the first thing that the Spirit said to me to say to the church is, He who has an ear to hear, or they who have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit says to the church. Amen. We understand Paul brings this up when he reminds us that the things of God cannot be received um, by people who are operating carnally in their flesh. Um, the Bible says that they cannot comprehend or they'll never understand what the Spirit is saying. And so in order for us to hear what the Spirit is saying, in a very real sense, we have to have an ear that is in tune to the Spirit. At that meeting three weeks ago, the Lord clearly said to me that in this season, our enemy will be our eyes. We are not to go by what we see. We are to, in fact, walk by faith and not by sight. And so what I want to do this morning in, in light of that I want to take a moment to clarify our assumptions and to reiterate our ambition. We understand that the circumstance of COVID-19 has changed both the context and the canvas of ministry, but the mandate and the mission of this church remains unchanged. So we raise the rhetorical question this morning, who are we then? Well, we already know, for those of you who have been around Good Shepherd any length of time, certainly in the last 15 to 17 years, you know that constitutionally we are church builders. We are community developers. We're a church that is seeking to expand our services and to impact lives. That's who we are. We're a church that builds. We're a church that develops. We're a church that serves. And we're a church that makes an impact. That's who we are. That has not changed. COVID-19 has not changed who we are. Constitutionally, we are still the same. But the question we also need to ask this morning is, who are we currently? I told you that the circumstance of COVID-19 has changed the context and the canvas of ministry. So then who are we currently? We know who we are constitutionally, but in light of this current context, who are we? Well, just before COVID came and shut us down, we clearly shared with the congregation that we are the Joshua generation. And I say that I'm speaking in terms of, of course, my tenure here the last 27, 28 years um, here as your servant leader, that we spent a season where we were seeking to, as it were, to quote unquote, go into the promised land, that God had expanded territory for us. And we were, we were concerned because we didn't want to be like the Hebrew children of old, to have God sovereignly bequeathed to us 300,000 square miles of territory and only secure 10% of it. 
Everything that God was trying to give us, we wanted to prepare ourselves to receive all of it. And we understand in a real sense that since we've come over into this space, uh, things have changed and transitioned. Um, for lack of a better way to say it, I'll say it the way the scripture says it. God said to Joshua, now Moses, my servant, is dead, which is to suggest that there is an era in the life of our church that has ended, and a new era is now beginning. We are no longer those who travel through the wilderness with Moses. We are the Joshua generation. You do know that Moses led the children of Israel into um, the wilderness and through the wilderness, but he did not go into the promised land. And upon his death, God raised up Joshua in his stead. That's where we are. We are a people who have been positioned to procure all that God has guaranteed. Remember, number one, by pursuing God's occupant presence, which simply means that wherever God is, that's where we want to be. We are to pursue God's occupant presence. We are to accommodate God's objective purpose. We are not in a position now to talk about what we want. We are to hear the voice of God and to seek to do what God has declared. And so we are trying to position to procure all that God has guaranteed by pursuing God's occupant presence by accommodating God's objective purpose, and by believing in God's obligative promise. That regardless of how the situation looks, despite how the context and the canvas of ministry has changed, we believe that if God has made a promise, he still reserves the power to bring it to pass. And so we are the Joshua generation. We are the Joshua generation, and as the Joshua generation, we insist on and we promote the preeminence of God and not the preference of the people. Can I say that again? Because I know that's hard to deal with. But we are not to capitulate, as it were, to the preference of the people. We are to seek to promote as primary the preeminence of God. We're living in a season now as the Joshua generation where collective responsibility will have to take precedence over congregational complacency. I'm concerned because I know that over these last 20 odd months, we have literally not been together physically. And you can say what you want to say, these kind of conditions can breed within us, whether we like it or not, whether we want it or not, a spirit of complacency. And we have grown comfortable with sitting on our couches and continuing to watch the broadcast. We thank God to be able to provide a virtual space. But I've got to tell you, child of God, we must not allow this current context to cause us to become complacent as a congregation. All hands, children, will be needed on deck. We got to submit ourselves holistically to the doing of the will of God and to do it without complaint. Please know that going forward, because of the way we are going to have to do ministry, more is going to be required of us, and it's going to require not only more from us, but it's going to require more of us. All hands are needed on deck. We got to acknowledge, we have to accept, and we have to adjust, listen to me, to the fact that there has been a shift in identity and culture. You can say what you want to say, but the truth is we are no longer who we have been. And this is not a season for us as the Joshua generation to rewind. If we rewind, that means we're going back into the wilderness. If we rewind, that means we're going back into Egypt. This is not a season to rewind in order to relive the past. This is the season to reset, 
to restructure and to retool for the future. I've got to tell you that before COVID, when the Lord gave me this word and I shared it with you on our leadership team and I preached a little bit about it on Sunday mornings, I had no idea how this prophetic revelation would unfold for us in this current season. But I do know that when the Lord gives me a word that it will, though it may not make sense to me uh, up front and it may not make sense to those of us who are listening right away, amen, God will reveal the layers of uh, his prophecy um, as time goes on. And we are seeing that this is right where we are. The way we've done church, we cannot do that anymore. We are called now not to be wilderness wanderers. We are called to be the Joshua generation. So what does it mean then to be the Joshua generation? It means that we've got to become an intergenerational fellowship. May I hasten to tell you this morning that uh, these last 20 odd months have shown us um, that the winds of attrition are blowing and that the people who were with us when we started, many of them are not with us anymore. Many of them were considered to be a part of the core of our congregation. May I su suggest, might not suggest, may I tell you that the median age of our congregation is getting older and older? I'm telling you, child of God, we cannot be a congregation of senior citizens. And I don't say that to be offensive because I am one. But can I tell you, child of God, the Bible clearly tells us that he calls the old because they know the way. He calls the young because they are strong. We need to become an intergenerational fellowship. And I stress that. Our fellowship, the complexion of our congregation, how we relate, amen, has got to reflect uh, multiple generations. We, listen, we have to put people in spaces, amen, that we were reserving, amen, to, uh, for replacement at a later date. We can no longer wait. Change must take place. We have to become an intergenerational fellowship. Why? Because people tend to go to places where they're able to see themselves. When they see uh, persons in their generation sharing and leading in ministry, um, they have a tendency to gravitate, come on, amen, to people within their own generation. And that is clearly understandable. I thank God that when I was coming through in the Lord, that I got an opportunity to, to not only meet, but to know and to grow in Christ within the context of my own generation. We must be an intergenerational fellowship. As the Joshua generation, we have to operate with increasing faith. We have to be willing to invest ourselves into what may seem impossible. We have to operate with increasing faith. May I suggest to you, my friends, that the only way faith is going to increase is that we have to get in the word of God. Amen. The only way our faith is going to increase, not only must we get in the word of God, but we've got to believe what God's word says. We've got to be so sure of it to the point that we are willing to invest ourselves not only to what may seem impossible, but we must be willing to invest ourselves into the end of something that you and I may never see. We must operate with increasing faith. The Bible tells us about a generation of those who died in faith. And when they died, they never saw the promise. But they believed God that the promise would come to pass whether they saw it physically or not. We are to operate with increasing faith. As a Joshua generation, we are to be innovative and fearless. Listen to me. We must learn to find a way to overcome obstacles and challenges. I was sharing this with our executive ministry several months ago that we are called, I believe, by God not only to adhere to CDC guidelines and regulations, but we are called to take advantage of those CDC guidelines and regulations. Amen. We have to be innovative and fearless. We got to 
have faith that finds a way. Amen. That's able to overcome obstacles and challenges like the four men bringing their friend to Christ. And when they could not come in for the crowd, they went up on the roof and tore a hole in the roof. And they lowered their, man, their friend right down in front of Christ while he was still laying on his bed. The challenges will be many, but we got to have the kind of faith that finds a way. I also will say before I move on from this point that we're going to need a team of people, amen, who possess the spirit of creativity. Again, redoing what we have done is not going to make it. We're going to need some fresh ideas. We're going to need, child of God, people who can think like this generation thinks. And I'm telling you, my friends, we're going to have to as I said to you, perhaps on uh, in the first months of my tenure here at Good Shepherd, I told you that it's time to make our move. You remember that? Some of you who have been here with me all the time, but then some new members, you don't remember, we preached, I don't know, six months about it's time to make our move. And we told you, number one, that the spirit has got to move in. And once the spirit moves in, the pastor got to move over. And once the pastor moves over, amen, the, the, the laity has got to move up. And once the laity moves up, then the church has got to move out. Are you hearing me? We need to be innovative and fearless. Amen. We need a cadre of people who are determined to run on to see what the end is going to be. As a Joshua generation, we're going to have to have an instructional focus. Listen, we're going to have to become a congregation that loves to learn and to live out the word of God. Please, child of God, amen, we cannot grow if we don't know, amen, and we will never know if we are unwilling to learn. Please, whatever uh, apprehension you may have, Amen. Whatever you may think may be some sort of personal learning disability that you possess that keeps you, amen, from engaging with us, amen, and having dialogical conversations where we can share around the word of God, please let me help you and tell you that all of our classes are designed, amen, regardless of what level a person is on, amen. If you have difficulty reading, that's not an issue in our classes. And I'm telling you, we want to be that church because, listen, until we get to a place where we are ready to receive instruction, we can never go forward. See, the church that, wasn't, that doesn't want to follow instructions is, a, is the church that thinks that they already know all the answers. And if this season has not taught us anything, I believe it has taught us that there's some answers that we don't have, and we need God to give us instruction on. We have to manifest, amen, an integral fidelity. We got to manifest integral fidelity. Child of God, listen to me. As a Joshua generation, as we go forward to possess the land, we have to seek to be the same constitutionally from the top to the bottom. We cannot have our own individual interests. The needs of the house have got to supersede any one's individual and personal needs. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Amen. We have to have integral fidelity. Why? Because we know that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Child of God, we have to accept the responsibility and what it means to be accountable to this congregation and to understand that the weight cannot be on a several, but all of us have got to share in without excuse. Do what you can, but don't sit around and do absolutely nothing. Amen. You bring all of us down. Amen. By your unwillingness to participate. Amen. You cause us uh, to lose our sense of integrity, amen. You, you give off, as it were, an air that we can, or rather that it's acceptable to have an atmosphere 
uh, in this congregation where the members are not loyal. And I'm telling you, child of God, if you love the Lord, then you ought to love his church. There's no way in the world you can say you love God and don't love his church. The Bible says you're a liar. Amen. If you love God, you got to love the people whom God loves. You have to love God's church. Lastly, as the Joshua generation, I mentioned this a moment ago, we have to be intentional about finishing. I told you that the Lord bequeathed to the Hebrew people 300,000 square miles of land. As soon as they got in to Canaan and they started marking off a piece of territory for themselves and building their own homes, they stopped going after everything that God had bequeathed to them. And when all was said and done, all they were able to do was secure 10% of what God had promised, which means there's another 90% out there. I can't get nobody to talk to me. And while we celebrate coming in, <clears throat> the Hebrew children, excuse me, coming into the land of Canaan, park yourself right there, slow your roll, and understand, yes, we celebrate the fact that God gave it to them. But the fact that they only secure 10% of it is nothing to celebrate. And how often have we been guilty about leaving behind us a trail of unfinished business by failing to finish what we have started? We're, this is the place where we are. And some of us are going to try to use COVID-19 as an excuse. It can't be. And I'll tell you why. Because many of our behaviors but being manifest before we knew anything about a COVID-19. So we cannot use COVID-19 as an excuse for the fact that we are not participating in the life of the church as we could. And so we're not going to use it as an excuse. We're going to say, listen, as a Joshua generation, we're going to be intentional about finishing what God has placed in our hearts, what God has placed in our hands for this season. And there will be no sense of satisfaction until there has been completion. And so I've tried to clarify our assumptions. I've tried to reiterate what is our ambition. Give me two minutes and let me tackle the text because all that I have said, I pray that you will replay this sermon over and over again until you get everything that I have said. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has said. My prayer this morning is that you're able to somehow surgically separate my physical presence, amen, from this communication. I want you to see past me, and I want you to get a sense of the fact that I'm not speaking on my own, amen. I'm speaking as an oracle of God. I'm trying to give you what the Spirit has given to me. And I pray that you will have an ear to hear it now if you're caught up in your flesh, if you're caught up in whatever your personal preferences may be. This word is going to be hard to receive. If you want things to be convenient and comfortable and unchallenging, then you're not going to be able to receive this word, but you can receive it in the Spirit. In fact, here in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 22, when the text says that he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches that is what uh, in the greek literally says uh um in well the the most approximate phrase in our english language is now think through what i have said think through what i have said this phrase only appears a few other times in the bible we know that it's three times uh, in the Gospel of Mark, once in the Gospel of Luke. Um, but, it, uh, but it appears almost twice as many times than that in uh, just two chapters of the book of Revelation. The Lord repeatedly says to the church, if you have an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. Child of God, if God says something once, I believe we need to pay attention to it. If, if he repeats it, you one or two more times, amen, uh, then it's something that he is drawing our attention to. But if the Lord says something over and over again, listen, please understand it is very important. Amen. He says it seven times in the course of two chapters. 
That is to help us to understand um, that the Lord is intensifying what he is saying. The Lord is shouting to someone in this season. Pay attention to what I am saying. Think through what I have said. Revelation chapter 2 and 3 uh, when you combine them uh, with Christ's discourses in the Olivet Prophecy in Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 21, it shows Christ's concern regarding what his people should be focusing on just prior to the end. I want you to hear this. Amen. The Lord wants us to pay attention. Why? Because the end is coming in, the very, in a very real sense for all of us. The end is coming. I told you that the age, median age of our congregation is growing older by the day. Amen. That the season of opportunity that many of us have had for years, amen, that window is closing. Are you listening to me? And if we have not paid attention to what the Lord is saying, as we come closer to the end, we need to pay attention more closely to what the Lord is saying. Those of you who have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. May I suggest to you that the Lord's vision of the times in which we live was clear enough to foresee that you and I would have more distractions to grab our attention than any other time in the history of man. Are you hearing me? We have more distractions. Amen. That are intended to grab our attention than any other time in the history of humanity. May I suggest to you, I believe that the Lord could foresee, amen, that the ease and the rapidity of communication would attract our senses. And that it would be difficult for us to keep ourselves focused on our primary concern. This has been my struggle, to some degree my angst. Amen. To... to, to to say this very thing and to not get back, you know, uh, just looks of indifference or, or don't bother me with that. Um, I got to tell you, child of God, I can't help it. Amen. I understand what God understands in the spirit. Amen. That we're living at a critical time. We're living in a confusing world. Amen. So much so that it is difficult for us to keep ourselves focused, but yet, I want to suggest to you that it's still our responsibility, amen, to hear what the Spirit is saying. And here's the thing, child of God, no matter how much I talk, no matter how much anybody else talks to you, amen, this is not something that anybody else can do for you. You've got to have an ear to hear, amen, what the Spirit is saying, amen. It may come through the voice of another, but you've got to be able to sense whether or not the Lord is speaking. You've got to be able to discern whether you are hearing the voice of God or hearing the voice of the enemy. So we got to make a choice that we're going to do whatever it takes for us to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Let me give this uh, little piece to you, and I'm going to let you go. He's asking us to hear. In other words, he's asking us to listen. The Lord is asking us to consider, to examine, to think carefully. Not only is the Lord asking us to consider what the Spirit is saying, but the Lord is asking us in the Spirit to comprehend what the Spirit is saying, to be able to grasp it, to understand it, and more importantly, to comply with it. You see, it's not just enough for us to consider what the Lord is saying and then comprehend that it is the Lord saying it. But then once we know that it is the Lord saying it, we must then comply with what the Lord has said. We ought to act in accordance to what the Spirit has spoken. Are you hearing me? Doesn't matter if we've never done it before. Doesn't matter if we have to trailblaze. Doesn't matter if we have to chart new territory. Amen. We are called to hear not only what everybody else is saying, but we are called to hear what the Spirit is saying. And, and listen, and I want to I want to share this now. He's not said the Spirit is not saying it to everybody. The Spirit is saying it to the church. 
question you and I have got to ask ourselves is, are we the church? Am I a part of the Lord's church? Come on. Amen. Am I a part of the ecclesia? Am I really, truly a part of the Lord's church? Am I a member of the Lord's body? That's the question we got to ask ourselves. Cause, amen, listen, the people who make up the church are those of us who have received a revelation that did not come from flesh and blood. Are you listening to me? Those of us who are a part of the Lord's church are the ones who have been baptized into the same spirit. Are you listening to me? And if that is not you, then perhaps you can turn the broadcast off because the spirit is not speaking to you. The spirit is speaking to the church. But if you are a part of the Lord's church, then the spirit is speaking to you. We are being asked to hear. We're being asked to listen. The question is, why are we being asked to do it? Listen, we're being asked to listen and to hear what the Spirit is saying because our ability to remain faithful while wrestling with the unfamiliar depends on it. Amen. We are charting new territory. We are the Joshua generation. We are going into a place that we've never been before. Amen. And I'm telling you that in order for us to remain faithful in the place where God has us, Amen. Being faithful for us means that we are going to have to constantly wrestle, amen, with unfamiliar circumstances. And the only way we can remain faithful to the Lord, we got to know what the Lord is saying. Because once we know what the Lord is saying, then we can know what the Lord wants. And until we know what the Lord wants, we can't do it. We can't do what the Lord wants. We have to be able to hear. May I suggest to you? Amen. I want to hear what the Spirit is saying so that as I serve the Lord, I'll never view my loyalty to God to be a liability. And I don't know about you, child of God, but I don't want to do it halfway. Praise the Lord. I want to have a clear understanding. Amen. An understanding of the times. I want to have a clear sense. Amen. Of the Spirit's direction. Amen. So that my loyalty and faithfulness to God, amen, will not be uh, viewed by others as a liability. I don't want to do, amen, the wrong thing. Amen. Thinking I'm doing the right thing. Amen. You can be faithful doing the wrong thing because you haven't heard, amen, from the Lord. In order to know what that thing is that God desires, you have to hear from the Spirit. I don't want to ever view my loyalty as a liability. But listen, child of God, amen. We have to listen so that we can execute our assignment with accuracy. So that we can execute our assignment with accuracy. Amen. Aren't you tired of flailing in the wind? Aren't you sick and tired of stumbling, fumbling, and bumbling your way through life? I'm telling you, child of God, if we listen to the Spirit, we can have clear directions, amen, even though, amen, the landscape is cloudy. I'm telling you right now, you can have a clear understanding of what the Lord is calling us to, what the Lord wants us to be, amen, even though you are wrestling with some confusing and challenging and unfamiliar situations. You can execute the assignment with accuracy. That is, to me, child of God. Amen. The genius of the spirit. Amen. To be able to speak to the life of the believer who's willing to receive it. And, and if we adhere to what the spirit is saying, we can always stand in a place where we're never operating. Amen. With a disadvantage. Amen. God will always cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus. So, I, so as I make my way to my clothes, can I tell you that we are being asked to hear and to listen so that our commitment to God can remain consistent. Amen. We don't want to give up now. In fact, we've come too far to do that. Amen. We want to be consistent. We don't want, again, the canvas, as it were, in the context of ministry due to COVID-19 and whatever else is going on. Amen. To put us in a place where we, with our lips, say we are committed, but our actions are inconsistent. Amen. I want to operate, come on, in the strength of the Spirit. I want to operate, come on, in the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So that my commitment can continue to be consistent even though things are changing all around me. Well, we're being asked to listen. We know why we're being asked to do it. The question is, how can we do this? Bishop, tell me. Train me, teach me 
how to listen so that I can hear the Spirit of God. Well, first of all, you have to learn how to still and silence your soul. You have to learn how to still and silence your soul. Even when you approach God, may I suggest to you that the first dimension and dynamic of your prayer life ought to be silence. You just run in there and jump and tell God everything that's wrong. Be quiet. Amen. Because a lot of things that we think are wrong, a lot of the anxiety we're having about the things that we bring to the Lord in prayer. If you get still and silent, the Holy Spirit will give you, amen, a revelation on what you're going through and dealing with. And you'll walk away from your prayer time having a brand new perspective. And you'll say that what I thought was a problem wasn't really a problem at all. Can I tell you, child of God, if you want to learn how to hear, you got to be quiet. How, how's God going to talk to you and, and you doing all the talking? You want God to talk over top of you? No, we know that in our human conversations, amen, that in order for us to be heard, the other person has to be quiet and they have to listen. Sometimes, child of God, we are quiet and we are, we are listening so as not to hear, but we are listening because we want to respond. And I'm telling you, child of God, if we, the, the call and the mandate is for us to hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. May I suggest to you that before you can respond to the Spirit, you must first make sure that you understand what the Spirit is saying. The only way you can hear it's by stilling and silencing the soul. Secondly, you can hear by having a preacher who has been sent. You can hear by having a preacher that has been sent. This is what the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 8. It reminds us that how can we hear without a preacher? And I know I'm, I am the preacher, so I'm saying it, and I... And I'm not saying it um, to sort of puff myself up because I'm going to tell you, there's a real part of me that wish that I didn't have to say anything to anybody. Um, but this is my call. And God could have called anybody, could have used anybody. But this is the dynamic. Listen, you cannot hear what the Spirit is saying if you continue to reject and resist whom the Lord has sent to speak to you. At some point, child of God, Amen. You're going to have to listen up. At some point, you're going to have to pay attention. At some point, child of God, amen, you're going to have to consider and examine, amen, and even comply. If you want to hear, amen, yes, there's prayer. Amen. Silence the soul. But there's also a preacher. Amen. You And not just any preacher, but a preacher that has been sent to you to bring you the word of the Lord. I'm trying to tell you, child of God, if you hear and obey God's servants and prophets, amen, you will, not, you will live, you will survive, you will thrive. But if you and I continue to resist the Holy Spirit and reject, amen, the word of the Lord, amen, we're going to miss out on all that God has promised for us. One final thing. You can hear and listen by stilling and silencing the soul you absolutely positively need a preacher that has been sent to you. But lastly, you can learn to hear by making the pleasure of God your priority. So i got to ask you, as I close this morning, at the end of the day, what's really your underlying motive? Or you just want God to bless you, hook you up, open up another door, give you a promotion? Or do you really want to live a life that pleases God because you know that in a very real sense, that these mundane shores soon are not going to be able to afford your home, and you're going to have to meet your Savior face to face. And you want, child of God, amen, to be accepted and received and not be rejected, amen, by the Lord on some technicality, amen, because you put your personal preferences above the pleasure of God. I, what I'm telling you, child of God, if you really want to please God, if you really want to know what God wants, if you really want to know how to put a smile on the face of God, if you really want to live a life that glorifies and honors God, amen, can I tell you, amen, that living your life in that way will always keep your, yourself open, your heart, your mind, and your ears open, amen, to hearing whatever it is the Spirit is saying. Because can I tell you, your flesh is going to lie to you. 
But the spirit is going to always tell you the truth. Your flesh is going to tell you that something is going to bring pleasure to God and, and your flesh is going to lie to you. But when you hear the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, amen, is only going to speak to you the truth and tell you those things, amen, that God wants you to know. And then when God, when you know them, I'm praying, child of God, that if you have an ear, if you develop that ear, please hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. That's my word to you today. Listen up. Father, we thank you for the message this morning. Thank you for the teaching today. We thank you, Lord, for a little time and space not to recast, but to revisit vision and to talk with us congregationally about who we are and what's next for us on the horizon. I pray, oh God, someone listening to me today will realize that we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. I pray, Lord, that someone will hear the word this morning and say, I'm not giving up, I'm not turning around, but I'm going to join my hand with my neighbor's hand, and we're going to walk this road together because we believe that there's going to be a great camp meeting in the promised land. I pray, God, that you will cause the rise up in us a sense of holy dissatisfaction until we're able, amen, to realize completion. Oh, God, help us to get it within us that 99 and a half is not going to do. The only thing that's acceptable, amen, is giving you our best and producing 100%. Thank you, Lord. Whatever leg of this journey that we are on, we know that we're going to have to pass the baton off soon enough. But I pray, God, that you'll help us Amen. To serve you in our own generation. Hallelujah. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there is a cross for me. This consecrated cross I'll bear until death shall set me free. And then I'm going home my crown to wear for there is a crown for me. Oh, God, I pray now that our ears will be open to the Spirit, where we have a revelation, hallelujah, that we're able to combat the enemy with. And we know, Lord, that there's some things that the enemy don't want us to know. He's trying to keep us in the dark. But hallelujah, I thank you, Lord, for the light of your revelation, giving us to understand that it's still incumbent upon us to be steadfast, and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing what the devil don't want us to know, knowing that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah, we celebrate it. Hallelujah, we rejoice this morning that at the end of the day it's going to be worth everything that we had to go through. Oh God, we give you praise now, and we thank you, Lord, that the half has not been told. Thank you, Lord, for our time. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. For the, the, the responsibility that you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for the strength that is available to us. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to operate in the Holy Ghost and see signs and wonders and miracles. Oh, God, we thank you now that even in this hour, as we walk by faith and not by sight, Hallelujah. We declare that signs are going to follow those of us that believe. And we give you glory right now. Hallelujah. We know it is always going to be something. We're going to have some ups and downs along the way. But Lord, we give you glory this morning to know, amen, that our Lord is going to bruise the head of Satan shortly. And while we're in the sanctuary this morning, while we in the virtual space this morning, we give you a praise now. Hallelujah. We're shouting on shortly. We believe God. Hallelujah. The things that are going on now is going to give way to what shall be. Weeping may endure for night, but joy is coming in the morning. God, we give you glory this morning. We praise you now. We thank you now. Hallelujah. We honor you now. 
We glorify your name this morning. Hallelujah. Nothing's going to stop us from giving your name the praise. And we pray, God, that you will know us. Hallelujah. That you will hear our praise register. Not only by the fruit of our lips, but by the faithfulness of our lives. Oh, God, we pray that we'll be able to give you a faith that you can see. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody put your hands together right where you are. Come on, somebody open your mouth right where you are. Somebody give God a praise right where you are. Yeah, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen up, everybody. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. The Lord says, Behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. Listen up. Listen up. And hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friends. You've been listening to the broadcast this morning and you have felt and sensed the move of the Holy Spirit in your life. You have heard the voice of the Lord and not simply the voice of a man. If you need to be saved today, you know that fundamentally and spiritually you need a change in your life. I want to give you an opportunity to not only believe it in your heart that the Lord is able to save you, but also to confess it with your mouth. To endeavor now in the power of the Holy Spirit to live a life that pleases God. You may not know what all of that means, but if it is your desire, I pray that you will reach out to us. The information is being provided on the screen even now. Tell us what you want. If salvation is your desire, do it. If you have a special prayer request, please put that down. If you desire to unite in fellowship with the Good Shepherd Baptist Church family, we would love to have you. Amen. The fact, amen, that our physical doors may be closed is in no way an indication, amen, that our church doors are not open. Our arms are open. Our hearts are open. This is the Lord's church. Hallelujah. And we want to accept and receive whomever the Lord shall send. So please, amen, reach out to us. Call us. Amen. Email us and let us know what your desire is and someone will get back with you. God bless you. We love you. And we look forward to seeing you. The Lord says the same on tomorrow evening. Amen. With our Bible study, you know we're talking about mental health. We're going to do an installment. And then on the following Monday, prayerfully, amen, we're going to have uh, some experts in the field with, with whom I'm going to have a conversation. Amen. The Lord has laid that on my spirit. Um, but I don't know exactly what I'm talking about altogether. I know whatever my personal issues are, amen, but I'm not a clinician in that area, and I don't want to steer anybody wrong. And so, amen, we're going to have two professionals to come and to talk to us uh, in a way that is germane to us as a church family so that we can learn how to embrace one another, love each other deeply, amen, and take care of one another the way we're supposed to. Again, God bless you. Until next time, the Lord says the same. We'll see you on tomorrow. How many of you know God said he will be with us? No matter what the situation is, we come to encourage you to let you know God said he will be with us. He'll be with you. How about that? Everybody help me say God. God said it would
said he'll be here with me. God said he would be with me. Oh, God. God said he would be with me. Said he'll be with me. God said he would be with me. Oh, through the storm. Thank you for joining us today for Good Shepherd Services. Giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner, or using the app, click the Give Online icon. Follow us on social media on Facebook at Good Shepherd Baptist, Twitter, and Instagram at Good Shepherd BC. And the Good Shepherd app is yet another great tool to keep connected. Download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. We air every Sunday on Fox Richmond, 
at 7.30 a.m. Please watch and support the broadcast. Good Shepherd Baptist Church, 2223 South Crater Road in Petersburg, Virginia. You may call at 804-732-5969. Building a church, developing a community, expanding services, and impacting lives. We thank you for the support of this ministry. See you next time.